Hello and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Palestine. Recently, we went down to the Russell Tribunal on Palestine in London and this is what happened. Why is this tribunal important? Why are all these people here? Let's go and find out. We're here for the second international session of the Russell Tribunal on Palestine, which is focusing on corporate complicity in Israel violations of both international human rights law and international humanitarian law. This session is concerned with an area which is very murky, less well known, very veiled, and that is you know, the way in which commercial interests, corporations and companies, are not only making money, but making money out of human rights violations. And they do that in many ways by providing services and resources to the Israeli government or corporations in Israel. The reason that I'm here and at War on Want is taking part in the Russell Tribunal is to put a, a focus on the arms companies and the other military companies which are complicit in the crimes that Israel has committed against the Palestinian people and other people in the region. I support the concept which has been built up over hundreds of years that there is a norm, an international law, by, by which we should live, which involves not you know, killing other people, genocide and all these sorts of war crimes that you get. This is the infamous offer prison. It is a prison located um, in the West Bank. It is dedicated only for Palestinian political prisoners. Um, it is a compound that includes also a military court and um, a military base. It's one of the worst places I've ever visited in. Now, this is personal because I've personally witnessed um, teenage kids being brought to the courtroom in offer in shackles after being taken in the middle of the night from their homes and kept in that prison for a whole week, not charged with anything. They were brought there just to testify against their neighbors who were involved in organizing peaceful demonstrations. I think the tribunal is, is vastly important as a tool for us as a movement to move forward and use the tools of uh, legal action against these corporations. I'm here invited at the Russell Tribunal in Palestine as an expert on the Belgium-French banking group Dexia. And I introduced a proof that links the Dexia group through its subsidiary Dexia Israel to the financing of the settlements in the occupied Palestinian territories. Billions of dollars are being invested. Millions of people are suffering. Who's profiting? We represented Rachel Corey's parents and four Palestinian families who were killed when their homes were demolished on top of them uh, in a case against Caterpillar in the United States. In September 2002, a bulldozer demolished the Yaqub Hussein family's home, about 150 meters from where Israel was constructing the wall and a so-called buffer zone around it. The destruction began without warning, approximately 5 in the morning, injuring the family inside. About six months later, and about 200 meters away, Rachel Corey stood in front of the home of the Nasrallah family, where she had previously stayed, to protect it from demolition by a Caterpillar D9 bulldozer while the family was inside. The IDF soldier operating the bulldozer ran over her and then backed up over her again, killing her. In a July 2004 incursion into the communist refugee camp in Gaza, the IDF demolished over 70 homes. Just after midnight, a bulldozer approached the Kalafala's home, where Ibrahim Kalafala was inside in his 70s and was sick and unable to move. When the bulldozer hit the house, his wife and daughter tried to get the bulldozer to stop, but he continued destroying her home and killing Mr. Kalafala. So, next time you think about buying a pair of caterpillar shoes, think again. Now, moving on to the next point. Elvis has developed its own armory of these different UAVs. The British Army itself has contracted Elbitz and its partner company, Fernies UK, in a contract worth over $1 billion to develop the next generation of our own British drones, the Watchkeeper drones. What are drones? I thought they were something out of Star Wars until I heard this. The Israeli companies have been particularly active in developing this new generation of drones or the unmanned aerial vehicles, as they're also called UAVs. And they're very dangerous. I mean, as I, as I have noted in my presentation here, for every one targeted person that they aim to kill with these drones, at least 10 civilians die at the same time as what they call collateral damage. A wall is being built around the whole of Palestine that is turning it into a prison. Why is this happening? Let's find out. 
when it was made clear to us that the Israeli occupation intended to build a wall on our land in Tulkarim. And we had 15 days to appeal this decision. And we went uh, to the courts, but they refused our appeal. We went to the Israeli High Court of Justice, but unfortunately the decision was made to build the wall on our land that took 60% of my, of my farm and this wall continued its route from the north in Tulkavim to the south towards uh, Tulkalqilia uh, and the construction began on the 5th of April uh, 2002 and this led to the suffering of the Palestinians in all the aspects of their daily lives. We went to a little village outside Ramallah in the occupied territory and the, this village it has its land is being annexed by the building of the illegal wall by Israel and the villagers started six years ago having non-violent peaceful protests to walk up to the wall and to protest the continuation by Israel of building what is an illegal wall I mean, the International Court of Justice ruled uh, in 2004 that this wall was illegal, so the, vis vis the villagers are actually walking to protect the wall and to demand Israel uphold international law. So Israeli activists, internationals, um, the villagers, we all walk together up to the wall. Now, unfortunately, the Israeli military opened up with CAS gas, uh, and as we were trying to come away from the wall, uh, I got shot in uh, my leg with a plastic bullet and I got gassed. But I mean, this is nothing to how much the Palestinian people suffer every day with an occupation. Everything the Russell Tribunal is about is to denormalize this situation of extreme impunity. Uh, that Israel and other and other uh, organisations and institutions and companies enjoy. Um, you know, we're all clear on what Israel's responsible for, but how does Israel do it? How has this gone on for so long, 60 years? Um, so, I mean, other other ways that the occupation is everywhere is, for example, Cement Roadstone Holdings. It's a company that's building the apartheid wall, and it's an Irish cement company. They provide cement to building projects. You know, there's probably many buildings in Ireland that have been built by cement, which is also being used to to build a, an illegal entity on, on the ground of, of Palestine. We have the feeling that we're left into prison cells, cantons, bantu stands. If we look into the image now, what is remaining from the historical Palestine is 12% uh, and what the uh, what was left for the black South Africans during the apartheid system was 13%. The West Bank is fragmented into three cantons, isolated from each other. In South Africa, we had 14 uh, Bantustan or Canton, and you can see in the images the humiliation we endure on 600 checkpoints as we could witness in South Africa when blacks were trying to go from one Bantustan to another. The image below shows that we have the same practices. I'm here because I'm a member of the panel, the Russell Tribunal into uh, Palestine, Israeli war crimes, abuses of human rights by complicit governments and countries, uh, corporations rather. Uh, I was at the, uh, the hearing in um, Barcelona, the first hearing. We hope that the third hearing will be in South Africa. So I'm very much part of this process. It's a very important project. That's Thank you. Uh, one other question was, why are you supporting the tribunal itself? Well, as a member, I must support it. Uh, but I was honoured when they approached me as a former minister of South African Democratic Government and an activist, a social activist and writer, but very strong activist on the Palestine issue. Yeah. Somebody of Jewish background, by the way. And I don't believe that Zionism is, is good for the Jewish people or the Israeli people. 
Uh, the only good thing for them would be peace, justice for the Palestinians, and that's how they would find their own security. If you walk into a supermarket, you'll see things that say made in Israel on them, dates, tomatoes, potatoes. Uh, these are, uh, if not made in an illegal settlement, they'll, they'll be exported and, and traded by a company which does trade and, and grow vegetables and, and fruits, etc., in illegal settlements. So you're buying into the occupation whenever you buy one of these. You're financially supporting the occupation and apartheid in Palestine by empowering these companies, not only financially to keep reproducing their operations, but also by normalising what they're doing. You have the power to stop all of this. Next time you get into the supermarket, just don't buy any Israeli products. Beauty products, Ahava. I mean, I don't think that many people actually buy Ahava. That's the Dead Sea mud and salts. Um, and they're, again, violating international law because they're taking these materials from occupied territory. Well, Ray and I are here. We're members of Code Pink Women for Peace, which is a women's peace organization in the United States that was founded to try to prevent uh, the war with Iraq. Uh, around the time of uh, cast, Operation Cast Lead, assault on Gaza, we decided we needed to get involved with Palestine solidarity work and so we launched a few months later a boycott campaign against an Israeli settlement company. It's a cosmetics company called Ahava that has its main factory and visitor center in uh, Mitzvah Shalem, which is a settlement in the West Bank. So that's why we were invited to come here as expert witnesses to talk about Ahava and its occupation profiteering and our campaign against, against them. Some people have taken direct action against Israel. This is the sort of things they've been getting up to. I've been involved with campaigning against a company called Edo MBM, uh, which has recently been bought by ITT, uh, which is a company in Brighton um, manufacturing weapons. I've been campaigning against Edo MBM in Brighton for um, nearly, six, nearly six years now, um, since 2004. Um, there's been a, a popular campaign in Brighton involving um, thousands of people, uh, which has um, included demonstrations, acts of direct action, uh, lobbying of a, of a local council, handing in complaints to the police. Um, and on 16th of January uh, 2009, um, after Israel had been engaging in the massacre in, in Gaza for uh, two and a half weeks, um, a group of people from Bristol turned up on my doorstep and uh, said they wanted to get in the way of Edo's supply of weaponry uh, to the Israeli military and I gave them some support in, in breaking into uh, the Edo factory. On January 17th, 2009, um, six people from Bristol uh, broke into Edo MBM and a couple of, a couple of us, including me from Brighton, um, uh, assisted them to, to get into the factory. Um, and the reason that they did that was uh, that Israel was engaged in a massacre in Gaza um, that had been going on for nearly three weeks. Um, I think at the time of, uh, of our action, a thousand people had been killed. Um, that figure later went up to 1,400. Um, and the six people who entered the factory, they uh, broke machinery, um, including um, lathes and mills, uh, production equipment, which the managing director later said in court took... Um, a month to come back online after, after uh, the break-in. Uh, they also threw computers out of the window um, and caused as much damage as possible to that factory to stop it from operating, which, which the action did do um, enough damage to uh, prevent the factory from producing weapons for the duration of, um, of the Gaza conflict. Um, and um, we were taken to court... Uh, nine of us for conspiracy to cause criminal damage, uh, £200,000 worth of criminal damage. There have been direct action taken against Raytheon and Edo in this country alone, where juries have acquitted all of those responsible for hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of criminal damage because they recognised that they were acting in a high group. So I feel we are already on the way to making a great difference here, and that by giving more people the the material to know what's behind the cause of all of their lessons and sanctions, that will actually take the movement to its next stage. I'd say that it's the actions of ordinary people, of individuals, that are the light at the end of the tunnel uh, in the struggle against Israeli apartheid and occupation. Not the actions of representatives or politicians, but the actions of people like us.
fantastic. I thought it was a really, really powerful day, and the whole weekend was absolutely fantastic. You know, this, this, this is really something that we, we, people need to be aware of and people need to get angry about and to do something about. Thank you very much for watching this Beginner's Guide to Palestine. Think about what you could do to help this situation.